Hi, my name is Jen Strader, one of the developer advocates for Gradle, or as you may know me on Twitter, the Code Generator. Today I'm going to show you how to convert a simple Spring Boot project from Maven to Gradle. You can use the guide in the Gradle docs and a project from the Spring Initializer project and the BuildScan service from Gradle. This is, of course, an open source project on GitHub, so you're welcome to contribute back if you'd like to change the guide. So going to use a Maven project in Java, the latest Spring Boot version, as well as the web dependency. Now, normally I'd click this generate project button, but today I'm going to uh, do this all in the command line. So I'm going to use curl and the uh, web dependency and call it example. If we go into this example directory, then we see that we have a Maven wrapper. If I run the Maven install command, uh, everything here is going to work out of the box. Okay, so now we can go to our migration guide. And the first step, of course, is going to be to run a build scan for this Maven build so we can kind of get an idea of what's happening here. And so scans.gradle.com, hashtag Maven to get the Maven specific instructions. We even have an option here to download this extension file directly. And if I move that from my downloads folder into the .mvn folder of my project, then uh, the next time that I run the project, it'll have that extension installed and we should get some options related to running our build scans. Okay, so let's run that install command. And here we go. So you need to accept the terms of service here. And if you click yes, then it will publish the build. We click that link there. Uh, first time you'll need to enter an email address, but of course it already recognizes who I am. So you see my picture there at the top. It shows several different uh, sections of data here. Uh, including uh, these clickable links. So if I was to copy that URL from the URL bar and send that to any member of my team, they'd know exactly where in the build scan uh, I'm trying or maybe having trouble. And that can be useful for debugging, of course. So we get some information about how much time it took. Uh, of course, there's only one project in this build, but if there were more, uh, that tab will be useful for you, as well as information about caching. And so this is uh, Gradle's task level caching, and you need the Gradle enterprise server and uh, a license for it to work with the Maven build. Uh, but you still get some information using this free build scan service, including plugins. So the interesting part here is the Spring Boot Maven plugin, which is of course a goal of the Spring Boot repackage goal. And uh, we get some other information about how long it took and other things if you look there. So there's switches uh, and some infrastructure, including uh, specs about my, my own system and network connection, etc. So uh, if I was doing this on a more complex project, of course, I'd find a way to verify that the inputs and outputs are exactly the same. But I know here that that difference is going to be the plugin that I just mentioned. Uh, since it is a simple project, I can try to convert it automatically. I have the version 5.3 of Gradle installed locally. And if I run Gradle init inside this product directory, it's going to detect that Maven uh, config. If I click yes, it'll try to convert it automatically. So this is uh, the new files that are generated, including the Gradle wrapper here. If I run Gradle build, which is the uh, equivalent in Gradle, and then dash dash scan, I should get a Gradle build scan uh, and have to accept the terms of service again here and go there. So that dash dash scan works because uh, that scan plugin is part of Gradle itself uh, versus having to install the extension like you do with Maven. So this is a Gradle build scan for exactly the same project. Uh, the Gradle build scans do have some more features, including this console log output uh, and some other graphs related to timeline and performance, et cetera. So we, we see a lot of different things here. The caching is actually part of the open source version of Gradle. So you get a little bit of an advantage there. And we even have a settings and suggestions for Gradle. Uh, like maybe once you do this conversion, you'll want to turn on parallel execution. 
One of the features that I like the most is this dependencies uh, view, particularly useful for debugging uh, conflicts. And if I were to search for Spring, for example, I can see all of those different versions. We look at the plugins that were utilized and uh, don't see that Spring Boot plugin. Of course, that wasn't uh, part of the automatic conversion, so we'll have to add that in when we go back to IntelliJ. The switches are on here, including the cache and the daemon, and uh, I should have the same infrastructure information about my local machine. If I copy from the plugins block in the official Spring documentation into my project, uh, including this specific release number, so I see that these match uh, because the Spring team has nicely aligned both the Gradle plugin version with the Spring Boot version, as well as most of their dependencies as well. And if we resync that, we now have this boot run option that we can run to get the application started. And this, of course, worked as expected, uh, started up on my local host. This is a very simple project. And of course, for more complex ones, you'll need to verify all of the dependencies. You'll probably need to learn some new terminology. But luckily, a lot of that is already in this guide. And so I definitely recommend you read it. So if you do have trouble after you started using Gradle, you can ask questions on our forum, discuss.gradle.org. You can also get more helpful tutorials like this by subscribing to our newsletter, newsletter.gradle.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Jen Strader, or as you may know me on Twitter, the code generator.